Hi folks and welcome back to Fisherman Den. So how many times have you been down at your local pond trying to catch a few carp and you get some fantastic bites and they're really really fast on the float or your, your, your tip on your, your rod is going like this and you think oh god brilliant and then you can't hit them. Well <laughs> that's probably because they aren't really bites at all they're probably just line bites and of course carp are notorious for milling around in your swim and knocking into things and that's what's happening. They're actually hitting into your line and that's giving you really fast bites or indications on the on the tip or on the pole float. And so today what I'm going to do is to show you some underwater footage of carp feeding and then we can explain what's actually happening and how that affects either your rod tip, your pole float or your waggler. So here we are then. To get this video I've uh, attached my Waterwolf underwater camera to a rod and cast it into the swim. Now as you can see I've got bait all over the bottom because I've pre-baited this deliberately so I could get plenty of carp milling around the water to show you what's going on. Um, it's a lovely lake, uh, it's quite a big one and as you can see the water's pretty clear until the, the carp arrive. Uh, the swim itself I'm fishing probably 15 to 20 meters out, although I'm not fishing just at the moment while I'm filming. Um, it's about eight or nine feet deep and I had been fishing the, the swim with both the float and the method feeder that day. So just imagine then that your feeder is in amongst all of these uh, carp all thrashing around in the, the area and as you can see they're, they're, they're not shy these fish. Uh, they've got those big pectoral fins, also the, the tail fins and those are going to be bumping into your rod tip and just creating these bumps on the rod tip that you can see in the insert. So if you've ever been tempted to strike at these uh, movements then don't. One of two things will happen. Either you'll just come back with nothing or you'll strike and you'll foul hook the fish which isn't the, the name of the game. And just be aware that some of these knocks on the rod tip can actually be quite violent Obviously some of these fish are quite big, uh, they're very powerful and I've seen my rod tip be pulled round by 30 centimetres, a foot or more and then just spring back immediately. So what you're waiting for is a, a pull round which continues. Um, if it bounces back then obviously we're back to square one again. Just leave it and wait for a positive indication where the, the rod goes round and continues to pull round. The only exception to this advice of course is when you get what we call a drop back bite. That's when the, the tip's moving, it may pull forward slightly to start with, but then it springs back and it just goes slack and stays slack along with the line. So under those circumstances, all you do is turn the reel handle slowly until you reconnect with the tip and it starts to put a bend in it. If it doesn't put a bend in it and it stays slack, then what's happened is that the fish has picked up the bait, bear in mind this is a self-hawking rig, and what it's done, it started to come towards you. So it doesn't matter how many times you uh, try and trim the tip, it's just going to continue to come towards you. Under those circumstances, just lift the rod up, reel in until you can feel the weight at the other end of the line, and then start playing the fish as normal. So now let's cover waggler fishing. Uh, to some extent, this is actually more difficult to hit bites properly, because unlike the uh, method feeder, which as I said a moment ago is a self-hooking rig, this one you have to look for indications on the float. So the easiest indication to get wrong is when the float just shoots under very very quickly. Your immediate reaction is to, to strike and then you think ah oh, missed it. But in fact it was never a bite in the first place exactly as I explained before it was just the fish bumping into the line. And if you'd managed to control your reactions uh, just for a split second longer you'd probably see the float just come straight back up. It is really frustrating, I know. What you're looking for is a slow, positive movement of the float to just slide away under. Um, that would indicate that the fish has picked up the bait and is just moving away, carrying on, just sifting through other particles. So the other scenario is when the float lifts up in the water, and that's called a lift bite. Uh, I do cover it in a, another video called the Telltale Shot, which I'll put a link in the description box for. But basically what you do is you have a shot placed about um, 7 or 8 centimetres from the hook, 
uh, or about three inches. That can be something as small as a number eight or a number six. And so when the fish picks up the bait, it also picks up that shot and that has a corresponding effect on the float, which is to create a lift bite. And what you're looking for is not a lift bite which just rises up and then goes back down again, because that's the same old thing where the, the fish is creating a disturbance under the water. What you're waiting for is for the float to lift up and hold, even if only for a second or so, but that's when you can strike. So there you go then folks. I hope that's taken some of the mystery out of what's been going on under the surface. As you've seen, the carp are milling around all over the place, uh, bumping into your tackle, and of course it does create times when you think, oh that's a brilliant bite, but of course it's not. And so I'm hoping that by showing you what's been going on down below and explaining um, the difference between apparent bites and real bites, you can now go on to put a few, a few more fish in the net. Anyway, that's it for another one. Hope you enjoyed it. Till the next time, bye for now.